Hi everyone, welcome again to my virtual campfire. Thanks for joining me today on the day of the eclipse. I'm shooting this video a little early because shortly after 1 p.m. Central Time, I think that we are supposed to be in totality here in San Antonio, Texas. So if you had an opportunity to experience the eclipse, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought and if it kind of moved you. Maybe not just in a, a physical way, but maybe in a spiritual way as well. As the title of this video indicated, you know, I think we really are under attack. I'll explain it to you in just a bit. I am the wingman. The wingman, I'm not always right, but I do have to call them like I see them. And when I see something that needs to be pointed out, good or bad, I want to say something. I work with the best RV dealers in the country. You can, of course, buy an RV from just about anybody. There's thousands of RV dealers out there, but not all of them are of the highest integrity. And I have found some that I truly believe in. I got a phone call. I have a 24-hour voicemail, as you may or may not know. And I get phone calls all the time. And then I make calls to people that have purchased an RV through the RV dealers that I trust. Here's a phone call. And I just want you to, I asked this question on a recent video. How far would you travel to buy an RV? Many people said, I'm not going to go very far. I want to buy locally. And if it's the right dealer, buying local is a good idea. But Listen to this phone call that I had recently with this guy and just see see if you believe what he says. We drove one, a little 1,050 miles one way and we're headed back home now with it. Holy smokes. I mean, what was it? Did you get a chance to meet Kevin at all or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we talked with him two or three times while we were here yesterday and today. And uh, we had actually spoke to him when we came back in around June time frame of 23. And uh, so we got to see several times in the last two days and laughed and cut up a little bit. We four hours, we went through the walkthrough and everything. Everybody there was that. And uh, I'm going home with a, a good feeling, not worried about anything. So they took their time with the, with the final walkthrough. You didn't feel any pressure or any upselling or any of that. Nope, found one or two items, and the mechanic found it. He said, I'll get those fixed, and he fixed them. And we're on the road, haunted, headed home. Look at 1,100 miles ahead of us. 1,050 miles one way to purchase an RV. I am so proud to be able to work with people like Kevin Fraser. Kevin rarely gets his picture taken with anybody, but... There he is with uh, James and his wife. And, and I love, love seeing this because people, you know, in, in our day and age when everybody's complaining and griping and dealers are ripping people off, they're not all ripping people off. When James got home, I received an email from him. I'm going to read that and then I'm going to move on to why we are under attack. It says, hi, Jimmy Thompson here. My wife Patsy and I just purchased a new Wolfpack 23, uh, Wolfpack 23 Pack 15 from Cheyenne Camping Center. It's our second RV, but this was the first new one. The experience was as good as it gets. The employees were great and informative. Heck, we spent a couple of hours with a technician going over the camper, bumper to bumper. Dave was highly knowledgeable, and the salesman, Kurt, was very straightforward with no hogwash pitches. Isn't that what you want when you're buying an RV? I mean, somebody that's knowledgeable, that doesn't give you a bunch of BS, that just lays it out there, that's what these folks got. It says, Mr. Kevin was awesome. Kevin is Kevin Fraser is the owner of Cheyenne Camping Center, and he is a close friend of mine. And I trust him so much, and I, I, I respect his, his I, don't know, I respect just about everything about Kevin Fraser. says he was awesome, was the same as on your shows. I thought of other dealers, but your informative programs and Mr. Kevin's personal touch hit home. I felt the honesty from you both. We traveled over 1,050 miles one way to purchase from Cheyenne. I recommend others to focus on the information you provide. They, too, will have a good experience and, and happy camping times. Thanks for your efforts in sharing the dealers you trust. Keep it up. That makes me feel so good. And I would hope that it gives you a little bit of hope to see that there really are. There's happy campers out there. There's great dealers out there that do the things they say that they're going to do. If you'd like to contact any of the dealers in the RV Dealers I Trust Network, a link to them is down below in the description. Click on it. Don't buy an RV from anybody. Anybody until you at least give some of these people an opportunity to get in there and earn your business. They really are different and I like them a lot. All right, so let me tell you about why we are under attack. My morning routine. My morning routine is uh, I get up, put the dogs out, 
drink my two cups of coffee. And as I drink the two cups of coffee, I'm watching for news stories. I go and I check out the news, the headlines, and find anything that, that may, you know, just to keep the big eye, if you will, see what's going on. And then I start digging down a little bit deeper, and I find some things from time to time that says, what? You've got to be kidding me. I'm going to bring it up right now on the screen. Uh, I just want to show you what this story says. It's called Farewell and Good Riddance to the Typical American Family. Isn't that a good headline? Farewell, good riddance to the typical American family. Over here, you see it's a nine-minute read. I'm not going to read this whole thing. But it talks about dinks, sinks, dinkwads, and sinkwads. Huh? That's what I thought. Dinks, sinks, dinkwads, and sinkwads. And what that means is they're acronyms for, look, meet the typical dink. They have over $200,000 in the bank and they aren't paying for pricey child care. Dinks are dual income no kids. Dual income, no kids. Those are dinks. Sinks are single income, no kids. Dink wads are dual income, no kids with a dog. Dink wad. Sink wads, single income, no kids with a dog. Not with any kids. Dink wads and sink wads. This lady, I, I, I mean, again, I'm not going to go through the whole nine minutes, but it talks about, although it may be premature to declare the nuclear family officially over, the model is beginning to look more like a fringe lifestyle choice than the bedrock of American society. Is that sad? It may be a fact, but to me it is sad. The American family, what has happened to the nuclear family? It's only worked for thousands of years, that's all. But now we're supposed to believe that the family is not important. And I think with stories like this, it makes young people confused. Look at that. Look at the picture. You know, that's how I grew up. Maybe like many of you grew up. But that's changing with the dinkwads, sinkwads, sinks, and dinks. Like it or hate it, the future of the family has never appeared so uncertain. For a society structured around the ideal of the nuclear family, its demise has left everyone wondering, what happens now? I do wonder what happens now. I'm glad I'm the age I am. I look back and I, I think that I was so blessed to be raised in a family, just a basic, ordinary mom, dad, family. And that doesn't happen very much nowadays. Isn't that sad? Where does that mean the future is going? I'd like to know what you think. Dinkwads and sinkwads. What, what am I? I'm a married, retired <laughs> I don't even I don't even want to go there with dogs. That's that's what I'm not with a dog with dogs. But this continues on. This woman I looked her up. Uh, uh, she is not of the po political persuasion and leanings that I am, but she represents what the mainstream media is and what most young people I think read. She interviewed this lady, Kristen Godsey an ethnographer at the University of Pennsylvania and the author of quote Everyday Utopia in praise of radical alternatives to the traditional family home. Just that title there. It's an attack on families. I want to stop there. I'm going to wrap this thing up in a minute. But, you know, we hear about the decimation of the rainforest. And is that a big deal? Why should we save the rainforest? Is there some reason to save it? I'm never going to go. I mean, I've been there, but you know, most people are never going to go to the rainforest, see the, why should we save it? Let's just decimate it. It's important. It's part of our nature. It's part of our world. It fits into the ecosystem. There's so many reasons why, but if you're short visioned, if you are so blind, you think, well, that is nothing to it. Let's just mow it over. The devastation of the rainforest, aren't we doing that to the American family? We're just destroying it. We're making feel, people feel that are in a typical, traditional American family like they're freaks. That's wrong. That's just my opinion. What do you think? It goes on, it says, The declining birth rate in industrialized countries reflects the economic reality that children are a bad investment for families, and so many people are deciding to not have them. You know what? Kids are a bad investment. You want to look at it on a piece of paper? They are a bad investment. So is an RV. But there's nothing more wonderful, nothing more satisfying, I think, than seeing that investment. Yes, it's going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But when they pick themselves up, 
We say, I help groom that. I help grow that. It gives such joy. And dinkwads and sinkwads and sinks and dinks, if they don't have children, they'll never understand. They won't know what they don't know. And where will the world be if we continue to decimate the rainforest, decimate the traditional American family? So I do believe we're under attack. If you agree that we are under attack, if you see what I see, type one. If you think I'm overreacting and the American family, the traditional American family is alive and well, type two. I'm curious to see how many <laughs> number twos we're going to get. Anyway, again, by now, the eclipse is history. I'd like to know what your takeaway was from it. As I probably mentioned earlier, I think, it's my hope, that people see this, all people of whatever religious persuasion or not, they look up into the heavens and they say, we are just this little bitty speck. There's something so much bigger than us that we need to understand and recognize and play by the rules. The rules set by, not by man, but by God. So that's all I got for today, folks. Again, I'm just an old retired campground owner, a person who enjoys sitting around a campfire and visiting with others. This is, it's a safe space. It is. I don't like that term, but it's a safe space for me and hopefully for you and for anybody, whether we agree or not. You can disagree with me and you're still welcome around this virtual campfire. So drop a comment below. Let me know what you thought of the eclipse. And if you saw any videos or you see any videos that make you go, hmm, that's something to think about. <laughs> Drop a link to those in the comments as well. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm Alan Warren. They call me the wingman. I encourage you to be a good wingman or a good wingwoman to somebody. And let's, let's get to work helping this world become a better place by being honest and truthful and standing up for what we believe and we know is right. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.